There's something weirdly satisfying about breaking out of a game's boundaries. It's an odd feeling going beyond the limits of a game and seeing stuff that you are never supposed to see. I personally love trying to find these types of glitches in all sorts of games. But for me, GTA 5 takes the biscuit when it comes to the amount of unique ways the player base has found to break out of bounds. In this video, I'm going to show you all of the still working methods, techniques and tools that you can use to get out of bounds in GTA 5. First of all, let's go over the basic tools that you'll need. I would highly recommend that you have a up an atomizer, flare gun, any type of silence gun, a parachute, a rebreather or scuba gear, and any kind of sniper. I'm going to explain why all these tools will help you now. If you want to skip past this, go to this time on the screen now. An up an atomizer is really helpful with reaching places you can't normally reach. It can also be used to get out of bounds if you ragdoll yourself in the right place. I'll explain this in more detail later. A flare gun can be used to tell if you can shoot out of a wall or not. If a flare passes through a wall, then an RPG or grenade can too. You can shoot your gun at any surface to test if it has collision. If you see a bullet impact, then it has collision. If you don't see a bullet impact, then it most likely doesn't have collision. I would recommend that you put a silencer on your gun as to avoid attracting cops. A parachute can be used to get to underground structures such as interiors or other unused stuff like this bridge. One of the best ways to transport yourself while under the map is by using water. You can travel quite far distances from just swimming. A scuba suit or rebreather makes water travel a lot easier. It goes without saying really. Lastly, you can use a sniper to test if a floor has collision on the other side of a wall. To do this, get your sniper out and hold the shoot button while stopping against a wall. Doing this can save a bit of time as you can quickly determine whether a wall is worth breaching into or not. For example, in this clip, I'm shooting through this glass window and into the shop interior. Notice how there aren't any bullet impacts on the floor. This means that the floor won't have any collision and I'll just fall right through it if I attempted to breach into the shop. Okay, let's now go over the different methods that can be used to get out of bounds. These methods can vary wildly in terms of complexity and practicality, so I'll put a little difficulty and usefulness meter at the top of the screen to show how difficult or useful the method is. This is probably the most common method out there. I like to call it the wedge push. To do this method, you'll need to find a tight corner like this somewhere around the map. These corners can sometimes be created if you move a heavy prop up against a wall, but these types of props aren't very common and are usually too heavy to move long distances. Anyway, once you find or make a corner like this, all you have to do is run into it. If you're lucky, you should just phase right through the wall. As you can see, this method is very easy and quite useful in a lot of situations. The only hard part is finding the corner in the first place, as they require a very specific angle to work. This next method is also fairly common. I call it the ragdoll teleport. As the name might imply, we can abuse ragdolling to teleport ourselves out of bounds. For example, in this situation, the game realises that I'm stuck and will search for the nearest free spot to teleport me to in order to get me unstuck, which, coincidentally, is out of bounds. In this situation, I'm putting vehicles in the way of all possible spots the game could teleport me to, so when I ragdoll here, it's forced to teleport me through the wall. Also, I would recommend that you have a up an atomizer, as it can make ragdolling a lot easier. Anyway, I currently find any downside to this method. It's fairly easy to do, and it's easy to find different glitch spots. Next up is a method that not many people know about. It's called the boat breach. If you reverse a dinghy up against a wall like this, and then jump out, you should get pushed through the wall. This only works on straight walls like this one, which is actually fairly uncommon to find while in water. This method is pretty straightforward and doesn't need too much explanation. The only real downside is that boats are very slow, so travelling to different places will take a while. This next one is called the go-kart breach. With the Vito Classic being as small as it is, it allows us to access a lot of tight and otherwise inaccessible spots throughout GTA. If you exit your go-kart while under a tight spot, such as a Titan or a trailer, you can pretty much always fall through the map. It's a very simple yet practical method to get out of bounds. I would say that this method is up there with the best, due to how easy it is to use. I actually found this next method myself a while ago. I call it the Vault Twist. You'll first need to find a setup like this, with a thin climbable wall next to a bigger, unclimbable wall. Once you've found something that looks a little bit like this, you'll then need to ragdoll next to the small wall. This can be done with an up and atomizer, or if you're in story mode, you can just dive forward. As your character is getting up, spam the jump button to vault over the climbable wall as fast as you can. While your character is vaulting over the wall, you should notice that you can make them spin around. Spin your character in the direction of the big wall to phase through it. Keep in mind that this can be inconsistent, 
Overall, this is a pretty solid method. It can be a little bit difficult and will probably take a bit of practice, but once you've got it down, you can get out of bounds in a lot of unique places. This is one of the more unusual ones. It's called the ZR380 launch. First of all, you need to put these rotating blades on the front of your ZR380. Once that's done, go outside and flip your ZR380 over. Get out of your car and then turn the engine on. This should make the blades on the car rotate. Slowly approach the blades and then press the jump button. This part can be inconsistent and a lot of the time you'll probably end up getting killed. But occasionally, you'll get launched under the map at very high speeds. I would recommend that you do this in a place near water or an interior, as you can land in either one of these pretty safely. This method isn't too complicated and is actually pretty versatile as it can be done anywhere on the map. The only downside is the car itself, as it's quite expensive. This one is by far the most complicated method on this list. I called it the trigger teleport. The setup can take ages, but once you've done it, you'll be able to teleport out of bounds whenever and wherever you want. First of all, start up the creator, select stump race, and then select transform race. You will now need to get out of bounds in the creator. As far as I know, there are only two ways that you can do this. To do the first one, go to this location on the map and look for this building. Go into photo mode and then slowly phase through this window. All you have to do now is go left a little bit and then go straight down. There you go, you should now be under the map. From here, you'll need to find a spot to place a drop trigger. Wherever you place a trigger is where you'll be teleported to in free mode, so choose a decent spot to place it. To do the second method, you'll first need to go over to checkpoints. Set the maximum players to two. Change the starting vehicle to no vehicle on foot. Then place the checkpoint down. You'll need to get a relatively large prop. I would recommend one of the stunt building blocks. Go to advanced options and put the middle of the prop out of bounds. In my case, I'm putting it inside this building. Once your prop has been placed out of bounds, go to cycle items, press the switch camera button and the adjust button at the same time. So for me, I would press select and right on the d-pads at the same time. If done correctly, you should spawn on top of the checkpoint you place down. All you have to do now is open the menu, which for me is down on the d-pad. You should now teleport right in the middle of the prop you just placed down. From here, all you have to do is find a spot to place your trigger. Once you've placed your job trigger out of bounds and are happy with where it is, complete all of the minimum requirements for the race and publish it. Once you've done that, exit to GTA Online. Go to my jobs and start up the race you just made. As soon as you're loading in, disconnect your controller for about a minute. Then, reconnect your controller. You should find yourself at the exact location where you put the trigger. Unfortunately, I have no clue how this step will be done on PC. If someone out there knows, please let us know in the comments. I'll make sure to pin it. Overall, this is a very complicated glitch and takes a while to set up, but once you do set it up, you can teleport to all of your desired out of bounds spots whenever you want. This next one is arguably the best method out there. It's called the jetpack breach. You'll first need a facility and a jetpack. Drive your jetpack out of your facility and bring it over to this location. Go to this clove shop, fly up into this roof and then make your way under the map. And that's pretty much it. You can go anywhere you want and you can land anywhere you want, all whilst under the map. This is probably the most simple yet effective method you can do. Last but not least, we have the insurgent wall breach. This method is my personal favourite, as it allows you to breach into pretty much any wall. To do it, you'll first need an insurgent. Bring it to any flat wall like this, and back the insurgent up against the wall at a slight angle, allowing for just enough space for your character to squeeze through. It'll probably take a bit of time to find the right angle, but once you've done it a few times, it gets a lot easier. Once you have an angle that looks similar to this, get out of your insurgent and go to the back of it. Try to wedge yourself between the insurgent and the wall. Take cover and move yourself in this position. Once you're in this position here, all you have to do is come out of cover. You should fall over and most of the time the insurgent back door should open slightly. Once this happens, get back in your insurgent, drive it forward and then drive it backwards. This should break the insurgent's back door. That's the hardest part of the glitch done. All you have to do now is find a wall that you want to breach into. Park your insurgent up against a wall like this. Make sure that the front and back wheel are touching the wall. Get out of your insurgent and go to the back. You'll need to do the following three steps fairly quickly. Jump into the back of the insurgent. Jump again to climb higher, and then aim a weapon. You should be in this exact position here, with half your body inside the insurgent. Once you've done that, move into the wall like I do. Keep going back and forth up against the wall. After some time of doing this, you should eventually pop through. If it's not working for you, try to adjust your insurgent a little bit. It will probably be difficult to do at first, but after some practice, you should be able to do it quite efficiently. Overall, it's a solid method. You can get into a lot of unique places with relative ease. Welp, that's pretty much everything I know about getting out of bounds in GTA 5. I hope you learned something new in this video, and as always, I'll see you later.